Oh, good evening, people. We are live. Manchester United have a very big task to playing away against Bournemouth this weekend, this Saturday at Vitality Stadium. You know, Bournemouth, who turned us around with 0-3 at Old Trafford back in December, with three goals scored. We all remember that pain, the Dominic Solanke, I mean, in the fifth minute, and the Philip Billing goal, and the Marco Sensei. Solanke, by the way, who has been a prime goal-scoring form for Bournemouth, probably licking the lips at the moment, especially with the injury crisis that United currently have. And reports came out today that Rafael Varane looks to be sidelined for another four or five weeks. What a shambolic But There is always a big but. Up to the plate stepped Maguire and young Willy Kwambala, who showed us that, you know, we can step up with the man of the match performances. Young Willy Kwambala will probably feature against Bournemouth the way as well. So, guys, this is not an easy task. This is a big one. You know, if we look at their form, it's been exceptional at home. You know, the past five matches in the form, they won three at home, one draw and one loss away. While well, United's form has been injuries piled up we have i think about 60 injuries this season 15 wins guys 12 losses 12 losses and by the way bournemouth have equally 12 losses as well so that is the point tally this is a must win game we cannot afford to lose this game to have slim chances to qualify even to get fifth or fourth to get into Europa. Players need to step up. They need to be mentality monsters. you got to ask yourself if you're a Man United player, can you win this game or do you want to hang your head in shame? Shame on you. Do you want to play in Conference League? I certainly don't want to see us play in Conference League. That is a damn shame. Sure, Ten Hag is under the pressure, guys. Sure, he must be. You know, massive pressure. With the FA Cup semi-finals looming, I mean, if we get to the finals, if we win the finals, we get Europa League. And I'd rather take Europa League than Conference League, fair and square. But how do we beat Bournemouth? Can we beat Bournemouth? How do we, how do we expect them to set up and line up? And what will be your score prediction? This show is all about us. As collective Manchester United fan, Mental United, welcome to MUFC Realist TV. Of course, this is Mick Roby, of course. And in the studio, I'm expecting to have Jarvis Cocker and other guests coming in, popping in. Please, you know what to do. Stay tuned because we've got a lot of things to talk about. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't. Let's get into the game. Ow. For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. On MUFC Realist TV. Ladies and gentlemen, from Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! How are we all doing? How are we all doing? Are you watching Europa League? Are you watching Liverpool currently playing at Anfield and losing to Atlanta 0-1? I understand if you do, I would love to watch it, but I am a diehard Manchester United fan. So I don't really give a toss about what Liverpool do. Of course, I do give a toss if they lose. Benfica currently leading with 1-0 as well. And AC Roma is up against Milan as well. What's going on with Leverkusen and West Ham? It's a draw so far. Bayern Leverkusen and the star manager, Javi Alonso. But we're not here to talk about that. We're here about to talk about our game on Saturday. I mean, this is a must win. We cannot afford to lose. And I'm sitting here with my latest clubber people. Just arrived fresh from the press. A new cup, new amazing cup, new cap and a T-shirt as well. Soon to be available for you to order soon on the website, guys. Please, guys. Enjoy the show. 
have you smashed that like button people have you subscribed yet we had an had amazing amazing week and i've been taking some time off doing new designs new thumbnails you probably noticed it's kicking off it's popping with eight games to go can we do this can we be mentality monsters as the intro? I mean, it's not about playing the big games for the big occasions. You know, we can turn up for Liverpool and beat them, like, you know, double beat them, three, triple beat them. We haven't really lost against Liverpool this season, but it's always the smaller teams that I'm worried about. We're talking about Fulhams and the Bournemouth, and as deluded before, the opening game against Bournemouth back in December. We thought it, we had it in the bag. We played at Old Trafford. And you remember the 0-3, it was a conundrum. So this is what I am worried about. You know, can we do it? Bournemouth is not a pushover, as explained. You know, they had impeccable home form, right? Three at home, one draw, one loss away. And that is the run of form. But if you look at our form, it's been pretty dire, right? Pretty dire. We definitely need this win. Why? Because the top five can give us Champions League. We know that. And we know that Spurs are running, you know, four tough fixtures now. When they're playing Newcastle now, Arsenal, City, Liverpool. And then you look at uh, Villa. I think Villa would be more of a, I don't know. For some reason, I think Villa will clinch the fourth and Spurs might drop. So it's all about the players now. It's all about the players. We, we have to sort of scrutinize everything. The manager, the player, what you're going to do. Injuries is no longer excuse when you come to eight games to play. It's how you finish the season, Ten Hag. And can you actually do it? We don't know. I mean, the proof will be in the potting until it's eaten. And of course, I'm waiting for my panel to come in. Jarvis is always late, but Jarvis is always excuse. You know, he's always get some Snickers deductions. But anyway, fresh from the press, all the way from Tromsø, Norway, the legendary Jarvis Cocker. How you doing, Jarv? Hey, 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 everybody. Hey, Mick, how you doing, my friend? Sorry, I'm a little late. I had to get the rascals... Uh... To bed so now yep yep yeah, yeah, you're always to do his streaming yeah first stream of the day and you know jarvis when i think of you i think of that song with natalie imbruglia i'm a little bit late i'm, na -na -na. <laughs> I'm lying here oh, lying oh you're talking about torn, torn. Uh, no no natalie imbruglia Tour, yeah, yeah, we tour. had we, we had a Norwegian uh, singer who was called the Tree in the Rain, who also had a, a version of that song. So if you haven't heard it, download it. That's that's even more better. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Jarvis, um, if you notice something on me, uh, you can see something very exciting. What am I holding up? Mug. A mug. <laughs> I'm a not mug. gonna mug you. <laughs> um well, exciting. I just received today uh, sample merch because, you know, we're launching a store soon. So I got the sample baseball hat. It's, it comes in different colors. I got the T-shirt. I got the mug. Mug is amazing, mate. Mug is amazing. It's one of those heating mugs, right? You pour in. It's black, right? And as soon as you pour in, the logo comes up. You know that one. Wow. Wow. Thermal. That's hey. cool. That's cool. It's quality. Anyway, Jarvis, welcome to the show, my friend. We're going to do this a little bit uh, different today. There's going to be people potentially dropping in. We have Nick, a man you Nick as well. She's working. We okay. might have a, a um, you will see. We might have even Uncle Jimmy popping in. Yeah, we will see. We will see. But for mm. now, it's my friend. Have you said hi to the VAR room? I see many familiar nope. faces. Stan Crow, nope. Yala Malmin, Jamie Wayne, nope. Raya Tree. Okay. Neil Briscoll, my good young friend. Hello. You know, Neil and me, we are getting along better as ever at the moment. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I, I haven't uh, forgot about them, but I just wanted to say hi to you first as, you know, we have to. And just uh, the opening statement, and then we can see the VR room. Big up for everyone. Y'all and I mean, PJ's here saying Bournemouth is decent. Are they Jarvis knows a lot of things about Bournemouth. And Jarvis, I'm going to grill you a little bit about that one as well. Um, yep. Evening Welsh girl as well. Big up, Welsh girl. How are you doing? Are you watching Liverpool currently? Wow, this is exciting. What if Liverpool, this is the first leg at Anfield, man. What if they lose and they go to Atlanta? That's a tricky customer there over there. Um, 
see dark row you say vein is here as well before. yeah coventry coventry as well like yeah listen um let's kick on the show man let's do that right jarvis Whew, yes. crunch time right squeaky bump time um uh, bournemouth away as uh opening statement it's uh, liverpool uh players can turn up for the occasion we haven't mm -hmm. lost i mean if you look at what we've done against the big teams it's the smaller teams that worries me and as deluded before back in december at old trafford we got turned over with zero three that was not an experience nice experience i remember us mm -hmm. doing this you know the post-match reaction show and it's been dire now we're playing at vitality stadium and vitality stadium with solanke billings they're not a pushover over there like you know they registered three wins one draw and uh, one win away a uh, one loss away actually so mm -hmm. pretty decent so they play good they are ever since they changed managers well what do we know about them what can we expect like you know mate talk to us um how do yeah. we want to structure this like you know do you want to start up with some small minor news first and dive right into the game or how do you want to do this the, sh the floor is yours yeah, first of all, we got to remember the Bournemouth, they they um, they sacked Gary O'Neill after Gary, a decent yeah. season last season. Yes. They have a board, they have a structure, and they wanted more. They wanted more with this group of players. They want to build. So they hired one of the most up-and-coming talented manager in, in Spain, uh, Andoni Ir Ir Iraiola is his name. Iriola. And and he he's done way, really well with this team. You got to remember, Bournemouth is a small team. They they have attendance like eleven thousand people or something attending their games down in the south of England. No one knows. No one hears about Bournemouth. No one bothers to to mm. even uh, even listen to news about that that team. But they have come like from from behind in a way, and and they are doing really well for a small yeah. team. Um, how we. How we like to set up his team. It's um, we talked about this before the game at Old Trafford, and and I warned everybody about Bournemouth. Everybody thought it will be an easy game, but it didn't because Iraiola he sets up his team like in a four-two-three-one. That the formation is 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 the same, but his style yeah. is very very solid, very solid mid-block team. He can play a low block. He has good strikers, good um, attacking players. Um, they have uh, Kloivert. Uh, Son of uh, Patrick Kloivert, Patrick the Kloivert's son, who, yeah, yeah the, the guy who played for the Netherlands in in the nineties yeah. and AC Milan, I believe, and and they have a great winger in uh, Tavernier and uh, Semenyo, and 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 uh, you know the jewel in this team is uh, is Dominic Solanke, so they of have course. a good attacking force, but the thing is Tavernier, Semenko, Kloivert, even Solanke, they work hard for the team. Yeah, so they, they are hard. very, very solid, and that's the thing. And they have a midfielder, Christian Cook. And but the one guy I want to look out for is is the left back Kirkus. I think he's really good, and and the centre back uh, Sabarni. I think he's he's one of the best. The Ukraine guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's no, uh, fine, fine. I mean, it's it's they're sitting quite. Uh, I mean, they're not in the relegation, but they've been playing good football. And what you said, like, you know, for somebody like uh, to come from Spain to take over this team, to turn it around, like Gary Neal, we know Gary Neal went to Wolves and Gary Neal being linked to the manager situation. Now it's Tanakh's situation in a certain way. There's been a lot of um, rumblings in the media. Everyone is second guessing around it, like you know, contradictory reports. Gary Dawson came out, um, Rob Dawson came out to say that, yeah, it's coming, it's, it's down to now ashford and um wilcox to decide and i'm like listen they don't have a scooby-doo they don't have a scooby-doo right i did a report this morning and basically if dan ashford comes in and wilcox come in they come in the summer so they basically cannot do anything it doesn't really make sense right the latest is what i've been told as well it's that he's got one year left on his contract they're going to give him the summer you have very much exciting youths coming up like and you know, we're talking about like you know they, they call him the the Foden of United. We're talking about Shea Lacey as well. We have the young kid, like, you know, the left-back situation. He's been training with the first team, Harry Amas. We have the Fletcher mm -hmm. Twins. The future is bright. The future is bright. So, I mean, yes, of course, Ten Hag, I read something about the son, Neil Custis, were writing about something today that 
he's changed his mood he's he's going to sack himself like oh my come on this is the sun right but surely if you look at it it's been you, you got to be depressed somehow right you cannot stay on top all the time if 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 you're constantly getting shit from media you're not getting backing right mm -hmm. and people forgetting like the, the glazes out movement and uh, it's gone silence nobody talking about that which is pissing me off so far so good there's been a lot of PR, a lot of talk where we haven't seen it as of yet so the summer will be interesting like you know who we're going to get wilton hug be here nobody really knows right so i'm tired of this discussion i'm tired of being linked to southgate the serbies and potters and fucking Voldemort's of you know what i mean yeah 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 so what do you think like you know if, if we do you think that if he doesn't win this game, he will be scrutinized. He will be out of job. It doesn't really make sense. It's what media is saying. Yeah, I think we have footballing people uh, in the structure right now and they will assess Ten Hag. And, um, and they will assess him not purely on results. They will assess a lot more the overall picture and, uh, and uh, they, will, they will take injuries into account. They will take the, um, the recruitment. They will take a lot of things into account. And they will, of course, talk to Ten Hag and they have much more info from, from the inside about what's going on in the club. So it's hard for, for me to, to just say if he will get yeah, sack or not. And I don't think it depends on this Bournemouth game at all. But no. if, you know, if we if we if we come to lose like three four nil away against Bournemouth, you know, the knives will be out and people will be screaming yeah. for Ten Hag's head. That that that's so far we know. But uh, for me, it's hard to say. You know, I see sometimes good things with Ten Hag and sometimes bad things with Ten Hag. Is in game management. We have talked about this a lot of times and how he set up his team, his structure, his tactics. There's pluses and there's minuses, and this is for the structure to assess. And yeah. I hope they will do a thorough job and 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 do the right choice. What is the right okay. choice? It's not up to me to decide, and I don't even know. No, myself. it's it's not for us. I mean, I do respect everyone that, that feels that ten, ten hag out, ten hag in, and all that stuff. Like you know, we we're here on this channel to give a balanced approach, but we're also here to call a spade a spade. And I, yeah, there haven't been like you know the in-game management. That's the highest critique. What you can yeah. give and and and, it, and, it, and it's valid you know it, it has been poor um i don't really watch the united stand but i watched a clip of mark goldbridge and he hit the nail on the head when he said people are now using this style of play and he said we haven't had a bloody style of play for 10 years yeah. he was right we haven't we haven't had an identity right so all of a sudden you come up with this style of play and then you got to marry everything with the injuries and you know but you can just pause for a second and just look for the future look at the kids look at the exciting academy the bunch of talents and you can say hang on a second he has actually given you know kobe Mano a chance he's given like you know ganache a chance he bought in a young striker in hoyland he played willow kwambala that was man of the match right as harry amas was on the bench you have habib the bench you have so many players that's been down now coming up to train with the first team so the future yeah. according to my opinion ten Hag is fucking good in developing and spotting young talent exactly what it did with with the um, ajax and you gotta have a summer where you can actually cleanse or be like i don't know you call pest control and just clean house you know and start fresh there so yeah we are not yeah, we already are not spoke about this uh, sorry for interrupting you yeah. Nick. i just want to say quick nora uh, spoke about this and he said he would rather use the money in the summer transfer window to get rid of players than uh, yeah i was in the stream yeah yeah you know players up first before the manager they, they we know who they are without even mentioning the names so mm. um listen jarvis um news flash as well i'm i read something today um and this is positive news i, I want to hear your take and i want to hear the vr rooms take as well as of season 24 25 a new semi-automated offside rule will be introduced same that was used in our world cup and now that's been used in europe what's your thoughts yeah, that's exciting, and and we all have have seen it in in the Champions League, uh, Europa League, how quick it is. You know, you don't have to have to wait for uh, five minutes to uh, to for the VAR room to sit there and, and draw lines and stuff like that. <laughs> this is what everybody wants. We just want it to be correct, and we don't want to 
want to want to sit there and wait for 10 minutes so no. uh, why not you know it, it's the highest uh, paying league in the in the world premier league why can't they just in, in, in invest in something like this right right yeah. right right you're 100 percent correct there my friend you're 100 percent. i mean i totally agree with you and uh, the same with the penalties and Sooner or later, we, we're heading towards AI bots around, running around like R2D2, like, you know, calling the game. But guess <laughs> what, people? <laughs> Where's the next year? It's not all over. Chelsea fan. Yeah. Book the hotel. Put it in the diary. Yeah. It looks like Liverpool will book the hotel in Atalanta, fighting a zero-two uphill battle. Yeah. Breaking news: Atalanta is up zero to two at Anfield Stadium. My goodness! <laughs> <laughs> and it's the West Ham rejects Kamaka, the Italian guy with all the tattoos. Hey, Kamaka. Kamaka scored again, so. So he has a brace against Liverpool. What a oh, great yeah, result yeah, yeah. for us. I must it say. is. Yeah. But is it? Or is it not? Because it's all down to West Ham. I read something today. If West Ham wins Europa League <laughs> and finish fifth or something, we still, mm. sixth place can give us Champions League. Oh, come on. Why, yeah. why even bother? Why bother? Yeah. Why bother? Yeah. West Ham coming in fifth. Is it theoretically possible? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't I care. So. I don't want to finish six. Put that um, in the we don't want to even talk about it. Yeah. Put, <laughs> coming but, in fifth, coming in sixth in Champions League. Ugh. Yeah. Well, 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 well. Well, excuse me. Like you know, we, we don't like Liverpool that much, uh, and and this is music to me. It's like you know, um, will Atlanta put the Spanish in the wheel for Klopp? Yes. Hope so. Let's hope so. Anyway, guys, we've spoken about that. Let's move on. We want to hear from you guys as well in the VR room. How happy are you right now that Atlanta is up with 2 nil? Jarvis, uh, how do we beat Bournemouth? Yeah, it's going to be a tough game. We know that Iraola plays a mid-block. He will play solid football. They will have uh, strikers who will uh, sting. They have uh, Solenke. Have a Tivani or as I spoke about, they have a Ukrainian center back, they have the I think it's Dutch, uh, the left back. I I, I, I rated him at the Kirkus in, in the last game when we played against them. Mm -hmm. It's going to be tough, um, but we have a chance. The problem is we don't have the quality to, to break down a, a low block or a mid block. Um, so um, that's that's my biggest issue. How do we start playing out from, from the back with the uh, you know, Maguire will play. He can't play out from the back. No. So, so we have to play from Onana straight up Long balls. to Hoylun. Yeah. yeah. Will Hoylun yeah. be packed in by, by three guys again? Mm. Or how? I, I, I bet you Iraiola knows how to neutralize that yeah. our only attacking yeah. threat. Yeah. So, in a way, it will be difficult. Um, we have to just pray that the players show up, do the job. Pray that McTominay don't start. He's I, out. I hope, personally, I hope. Yeah, that's a good thing in a way. I, I don't wish any injuries on any anybody, no, but no, no. I don't like McTominay as a player. I don't, don't think he's good enough on the ball. He's not technical enough. Okay. He don't have the the swag this, to play midfielder at Man United. Yeah. But this is where Mason Mount comes in. I want to see oh, Mason really? Mount. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yes. This he is, has um, been in the last couple of games. For you that's been busy, let me just update you the team news. We are doing the press conference uh, tomorrow, manager's press conference. Me and Mark, as per usual, it's on tomorrow. But um, latest news is Scott McTominay out for four weeks, uh, twisted uh, knee. And today was a report came out that um, Rafael Varane is missing four or five weeks as well. So no Varane, no Scott McTominay, and apparently no Rashford either. No okay. Belfast baby. So Belfast baby will not start either. So at least you know. Now you know. Well, I'm not I'm not sad because Rashford uh, is not available no. in a way. It's a good thing. No. I think it's a good thing. Now this is the challenge now for Ten Hag and now you've seen 
you know, pictures from the Carrington, like, you know, there's a lot of youngsters coming in training. Will they be introducing the squad? Will they? I mean, surely you have nothing to lose. Throw in the kitchen sink. Use the youth, right? Use the youth. If you look at the under-18s, they're absolutely dominating the league. They trashed Liverpool with 9-1 under-18s. They are, I think they are like 13, 14 points ahead in the league. They're doing magical stuff, right? So you can even put the under-18s team to play tomorrow, but we will not do that. Um, so how do you reckon they will set up, like in terms of formation-wise? Do they always... Man United. Hmm? Man United. Bournemouth. Oh, yeah, they, they will come in the 4-5-1. Or, no, four, no, five, no, no. 4-2-3-1. Four, 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 that's, that's their usual okay. formation. But, you know, it, it's just numbers. When it comes numbers. to tactics, it's about how you play and and they play very solid as i as i mentioned with the mid block they they work hard they hard to break down and that's the thing how are we going to break down a team that works hard because we don't have the quality if they if, if they leave leave a uh, room in behind open yeah it's it's easy for us to just uh, dink it in and, and run because we have pace we have pace with the uh, with hoyle yeah. and pace and not so so in a way if if they if they uh, fill the gap and and there's no room to run into, what do we do? We can well, play around from one side to the other, shift play, set up the wingers one against the one, try to dribble, try to trust our qual qualities. That's the hard thing, you know, we, because these players doesn't seem to have the the quality to to do so. Yeah, listen, it's it's how you play the game or you go home, hang your head in shame because. Yeah. Do you really want to play in Conference League? You know, it, it ain't going to be pretty if you end up in Conference League. Like, you know, you don't want to play in Conference League. You're a professional footballer. Anyway, let's go to the chat to see what people are saying. Brendan Chapel, what you saying, Brendan? Big up to Brendan. How are you doing? Hoyland was in investment, but not a bargain. No, he wasn't. Mm -hmm. But his value, if you read the rate, latest report about the young sister United has brought in, like, you know, Hoyland's value has gone up massively. Mm. Kobe Maynard's value, wow. That type of midfielder you will pay 70, 80, 90, 100 million for, right? Um, not even to talk about uh, Alejandro Ganacho. We bought him for 475,000 pounds. His value, surely 70 right now, even more, guys. So the value has gone up for those players. You know what I mean? It's um, Even if it's a bargain, it's a return on investment because Rasmus Hoyland's value is going to go up and up and up and up. And he's still a youngster, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so what are we guys saying here? Football power hour is here, Poppy. Big up to you, Pops. How are you doing? Poppy. Poppy, Poppy, Congratulations on, on thousand subscribers, Poppy. Yes. By the way, yes. I haven't get to say it uh, up front, but uh, you can do it. Big up, working hard, always crafting. So if you haven't, take a look at the uh, football power hour. Go and sub yeah. subscribe. Go subscribe. I sent the puppy the link here, the bots to, to come in, but he's in transition. He's He's been in Atlanta working, working hard for the money, but he's now in transition. So I do come in Power Hour if you have a chance and do go subscribe to Football Power Hour. You know who he is. 1,000 subscribers. Big up. Big up, big up, big up, big up, big up. Um, smash that like button is what he's saying in reply. You're such a humble person. Daniel Hutchinson, what you are saying, what do you think ffp change would uh, what what does it is this dutch what 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 do you what do you think ffp change what could be happening in june did you understand what i said jarvis <laughs> what do you think ffp change what could be happening in june yes the ffp mm -hmm. rules have changed 100 percent because they voted for allowing clubs now to invest 85 percent it used to be 75 percent of the you know the money that you generated but then it's now increased with another 10 percent, so 85 percent going away from the psr to more of the european ffp rules mm. what do you think jarvis is it a good thing or a bad thing does yeah, it more benefit more the bigger clubs so this will the smaller clubs I, I can only go with uh, what I heard uh, Adam talked about uh, because I, I watched uh, what's the name yeah. of the channel again. Oh, big up. 
Yeah, and and uh, and he was positive. He said he said uh, United would uh, would benefit from this uh, the most. So that's a good thing. And and the big club with high revenue would benefit from this. We will make it. It will give us more spending power in a way. So it looks like we can spend a lot of money uh, coming up with the new rules. And and that's a great news for us because we have always yeah. been been hindered by by the FFP because of our massive debt and um, and past failed uh, transfer policy so uh, coming up uh, for, forward uh, i think this will be a good thing and and finally we can spend uh, with with in in the same amount as our revenue and that's that's a good yeah. thing yeah. yeah, um, there's another thing also that was introduced or put on the suggestion board was that you know you can get away with murder by paying a beauty tax apparently instead of getting points deduction. And that's like, who came up with that idea? Must be city, <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> beauty tax. Anyway, yeah. guys, we have an upper cut. We have the legend himself, Rush Maino, gifted 10 uppercuts. Big up for all of you. Madhouse was gifted a membership. Wow. Big up Madhouse, right. Nico AV was gifted a membership. Nicholas Mattia was also gifted a membership. We have Joseph O'Hanlon also, Karim O'Jalil, and it's Ramadan uh, Mubarak or Aid Fatir as well to you guys. Sorry, I forgot. Dazed Day 73, Sandy Sermon as well, and Adiyemi Adagoke was also gifted a membership. Sorry if I slaughtered your names there, guys, but that is kind of what I see. Is it 10 or do I miss something here? One, two, three, ten. But if you didn't receive a gift, you need to do something, Jarvis. And what is that for setting? Yeah, you have to go go on your settings options and then and, uh, and click on uh, receive gifts. Big up. Don't forget to thank Rashmeno, the legend, the legend Rashmeno, for gifting these memberships. And also, um, just a footnote, even if you've been gifted a membership, we'd really appreciate if you continue supporting this channel by becoming a regular, you know, regular ball supporter. You know, it's only costing you one euro per month and you get to watch all this content. Anyway, you get to watch all this content for free. Smash the like button. It's for free. Subscribe is free. But if you want to support us, because we do work hard. We work hard for the money. <laughs> Not for we the money. Work hard. That's true. That's true. I have a full time yeah. job. I have two kids. I run two my kids. own business, and yeah. I'm, I'm I'm involved with this channel and several other channels yeah. all the time. So so it's hard work, and and you have to have yeah. a lot of energy. And the feedback we get from from the VAR room, from the chats, from the comments, from the likes, everything it gives me energy to keep on going. So so yeah. if you haven't, please hit the like. That will be really nice. Yeah. Thank you. And and by the way, Monday show, Jarvis and me, you know, Jarvis's corner with Jay Daly, we had record live numbers on this channel. We achieved 14,000 views and almost 500 likes. And it feels so good. It's it's just for the, it's, it's so good. It is. Re so I really want to thank everyone that watched it. Keep watching, keep smashing the like because we get swallowed up by the big corporates. You know who they are, right? We, we want to do quality videos so thank you so much anyway gas taylor big up to you gas 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 i haven't seen gas for a long time united need to play yes. as a team not as 11 individuals that have any chance of winning i agree with you i agree with you gas you know we need to gas it up 100 percent. we need gas to be up. positive gas it up but we also I, need to be positive. but yeah but i just want to say say big up to uh vegeta vegeta samaza uh, coming in from Twitter because we have a lot of people watching us on Twitter too. When I send out the link, please retweet. It helps us to build the community. So, so yeah. if you want, please give us a retweet. That's too oh, because yeah. this I is know Vegeta. it's going live on Twitter at as we speak. So we have people watching. Big up Vegeta. Big up Vegeta. I know you, Vegeta. We've spoken on Papi's channel before. So big up to you. Anyway, who else? Deepers are shattering it, what you are saying. Um, Jamie Vane hoping for Atlanta. Give me more. Give me more. Give me three. Give me three. Give me three. <laughs> give me one. Give me two. This is like a Metallica song. Give me one. Oh, give me two. Give me three. It's one? a goal check. It's a goal check in the Liverpool for game. What? Really? Uh, goal check yeah. for what? Check. Three? Oh, it's check over. I think it's disallowed. Still one, two? Two nil Atlanta. Ten minutes wow. left in the game. Yes. 
get in there. Get in there, son, 100%. Um, wow, you community, you're mad. And, wow, did Rushmaner just gift it another 10? Right? Uh, no, 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 he didn't. You? No. Me? I just want to okay. address this comment from Jamie. He's been talking about my hair all, all night. You know, it's hair yep. gel. And I have a machine. Sometimes I cut it myself. Sometimes I go to the hairdresser. It, it depends. So it's nothing. It's not a wig. It's my, my real hair. So thank you for the compliments, uh, Jamie. And soon you will see that Jarvis will open up his own YouTube channel. Jarvis's beauty and a health tip. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, Jarvis? Like, oh. Well, you know, I use this is a soap. You can use it to wash your hair, to wash your hands, to wash your and whatever. It's the same soap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And guys, um, this week has been very good for our channel as well. Uh, worth to mention, we surpassed 21,200 subscribers as well. We've been a little bit of on a stalemate, but our goal and target is 30,000 subscribers. But never change the way we are because we are unique. There can only be one Mick, can only be one Jarvis corner as well, can it? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, true. One, All right. One Jarvis, Mick and Jarvis. Um, yeah. yep. So are we going to talk a little bit about Ten Hag? Because what's going on with Ten Hag at the moment? Do you think he feels the pressure? Is Do we have the confidence to to win the rest of the games? Can, we, can he go through this with, with uh, a... a um, big chest and 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 have confidence in in his team selection his in-game management or is he doubting himself at the moment and feeling the pressure and will crumble right we got to look at from a human aspect right mental united um would you survive the pressure that you that he's under right everything that's been written of course you read media headlines um internally you having discussions with your employee 100 percent um but you got to look at it from a, from a human perspective as well, right? You know, of course, there's this pressure. There's the course you're losing your own self and your own abilities. Same with players. Like, you know, managers mm. can also drop out of form. And I think that currently he's kind of dropped out of form himself, right? So he's looking for his mojo. I think so. Can mm. he turn this around? Well, depends on how would you set up depends on what you use i think it's a blessing in the sky right now that you have um belfast babe injured you have no scott mctominay so there's no excuse to fall on scott mctominay um you have plays that's, that's shown that you know if you look at willie kwambala this guy lives and breeds manchester united this guy did an interview and he just, I don't care. I just, I love Manchester United. He just spoke about Manchester. He's another Patrice Evra, right? So can he turn around? Yes, he can. This is football and everything is possible. But it's not only the managers, the players that need to turn around. So you need to scrutinize the players as well. But you also need to scrutinize the selection, 100%. Mm -hmm. So it depends on eight games to go. You have an FA Cup final. Potentially, you got to beat Coventry. Yeah, and if we win the FA Cup final, I think the mood will change as well. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. If we win the FA Cup final, everybody will will, will jump on board. At least the big majority. Uh, but the thing is, it's a long way until that. And and why I mentioned this thing about the pressure because for me the manager need to have the confidence it's, it's the same with the players you know you have to have the confidence you have to have the belief in 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 what we are doing is it good enough and and the thing is oh now i just saw liverpool score um did they no oh, no, no atlanta no, 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 scored no. 3-0 atalanta atalanta just scored nil <laughs> Really, really, really. <laughs> I love it. I bloody love it. <laughs> Three uh -huh. in the well, you can't enjoy United, you can at least enjoy Liverpool losing. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see Ten Hag. I mean, I want to see Klopp's interview after. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I just want to finish my thought about Ten Hag and the pressure coming up. 
for yeah. him to to really play at his best, pick the best team, have the confidence. You know, it, you want the confidence from Den Haag to rub off on the players. And, and, and that's important. So now it's an important time for Den Haag. And, you know, if it can come true and have a decent ending of the season, maybe win the FA Cup, win, for example, six out of the last eight games, finish strong. doesn't matter if you come in the Champions League or not. If you can show us all that you have the confidence and you have the ability to 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 lead this team to uh, to victory, I think a lot of people will come on board and, and we will assess him on this. Uh, yeah. So for me now, there's no excuses. You just have to start winning games. Yeah. This style of play, where everyone is uh, hopping on, like you know, as as Goldbridge said it as well. Like he spoke sense. Like we haven't had si- uh, style of play since what Ferguson left, right? Louis yeah. Vahal, At least we saw he set up a little bit pragmatic. Jose Mourinho only wants to sort of uh, recruit in old players to just win, 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 win. I mean, we we got to look at the long term vision, right? So. Don't matter if you're Ten Hag in, Ten Hag out. This is Manchester United we're talking about, right? I don't want to see, you know, us being ripped apart again and start over again because it's a new process to start, right? So I'm tired of this, and I believe we can turn it around. But anyway, Jarvis, is eight games to go. Not long to go. So <sighs> proof will be in the potting, man. We can close off the shop because it's been a dire season. We haven't really had moments of brilliance to watch any. You know, I remember this uh, Liverpool game. Yeah, and the cup that was one of the mem- memory, and also the goals from from last Liverpool game, like you know Kobe Maynard's goal, wow, Ganacho's bicycle kick, like you know these are memories that will live for this season, but the rest of it, just put it under the carpet, dust it under the carpet. But yeah, mm-hmm. can he win? Yes, hundred percent. Um, in terms of um, who do you think will start then? Who who what? What do you think? Like, you know, how do you, if you were Ten Hag, how would you line up? Honest, if you were Ten Hag. Yeah, we don't have many centre backs available, so it will be Maguire and Kwambala. That's 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 for sure. Um, and and the pullbacks, we don't have many options. It will be Dallow and Fambisaka who will start right or left. We don't know, but my 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 bet is Dallow on the right and Fambisaka on the left. Um, Garnacho will start. Uh, Hoylund will start. And I think Anthony will start now when when um, Rashford is not available. I would like to see Ahmad uh, if it was up to me, but um, and give Ganacho a, a little bit of a rest because I think he's starting to be overplayed uh, because he I runs am. a lot. Uh, when it comes to the midfield, this is the the interesting thing. I think Casemiro has been shit to be honest lately. Yeah. And and I wouldn't start Casemiro. I think it's time to change it up and try something different. I would like Mason Mount to start. I would like uh, Maynard to start and Bruno in the 10 or the 8. Basically, okay. we play with two number 8s. So no Casemiro for me. All right. So I just lay now, of course, Onana's going to start for you 100%, right? He's been he's yeah. been much improved as well. Um <clears throat> But what happened to uh, Bayandi? Like, is he injured or what's going on with Bayandi? No, 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 no. Onana is our first choice. That's just the way it is. Oh, no, no. Oh, what's it's my name? Of the, of, the, of the reserve goalkeeper. Yeah. You have to sit on the bench until we have injuries. That's just the way yeah. it is. We do apologize. MEFC Realist TV lineup builder. We are working on this. This is going to be updated. For now, you can only choose 433 fun. Um, but it's it's fun just to pick the team, just for your information and further development. Who would you start as a left back, you said? Um, I, I think uh, Fambi Saka will start as, as a left back. And and the VAR room, get your lineups in so we can uh, compare with uh, me, me and uh, mine and Nick's. Okay. We spoke about this VR situation, Fambi Saka, there was never a pen. And then... You know, Liverpool had a, you know, sort of Arsenal had the same debacle like in the Champions League. And listen, at the end of the day, yesterday's game, um, you know, PSG versus Barcelona, what a game of football that was. Like, you mm. know, there were levels in how you have, you you fight for the team and come back. Mm. I mean, the technical players that I have, like, you know, getting out of tight spaces, oh my God, you, we are miles away from there. Like, mm. we wouldn't survive if we even came there um so yeah 100 percent. you go with a <coughs> dalo you say yeah 100 percent. yeah dalo kwambala kambuala and uh, maguire maggie 
Yeah. Oh, Harry Maguire, Maggie. Maggie Mick, and Mick. Mm. Do we have time for the super chat? Because um, Rushmano just came in with a massive super chat. Yeah, hang on a second. I will. Uh, I will. Hang on, Rashi. We're not keeping you hanging, my buddy. Listen, this is Rushmano again coming up with an uppercut. Jesus Christ. Super chat, super chat, super chat. Super chat. Boom. There you go. Rushmano. Do you have the honor, Jarvis? Jarvis will read it. Oh, Rushmano, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You help out the channel incredibly. Gifting gifts and coming in with super chats. You are a legend, my man. Is Jorgen, is that Jorgen's bottom lip uh, quivering? <laughs> Only United can take them out of the FA Cup and cut their Premier League chances. Yes, sir. United yes, sir. have done so. We have we have been better than Liverpool playing head to head this season. And Jurgen Klopp is shaking at the moment, lip quivering. So Shake thank you. It up, Great baby. That. <laughs> Twist and shout. That's Jurgen Klopp. <laughs> Big up, Rashmina. Thank you so much. We love you as well. We love everyone. Uh, keep it coming. If you want to send in super chats or memberships, please. Royden Frost has saying here we have 70 million to spend. And if we sell 10, who said we have 70 million to spend? If we have. Kagzilla Bratan. If we have 70 million to spend and we sell 10 players, that gives us around 220 million to sack Eric Ten Hag and get a new manager will cost us 50 million. Eric Ten Hag is going nowhere. Mm. Correct. Because, you know, not only do you have to sack Ten Hag, but you have to sack the whole entourage as well. Benny McCarthy is currently packing his bags. They're not discussing his contract. If they are serious, they are looking to point the best in class coaches, best in class, whatever. I'm tired of this best in class because we haven't seen it as yet. But best in class means that the top notch medical mm. department, top notch doctors, top notch coaches. You know, when Tenha came in, he brought in McLaren, he brought in Michel van Gaag and some other dude. Some, but the rest has been lingering on from the past manager. So they need a full clean out as well. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 uh, okay let me just go back so thank you guys uh, let's continue to this lineup okay okay so that, that was wrong that, oh i don't like to see myself where's jarvis there's jarvis hey hello uh okay yeah, the, back five, the back five says itself uh, we come to the midfield my question to the var room would you start casemiro or will you start mason mount what's your pick because i think uh, menu should be in the six um and the two number eights bruno and uh, mason mount because for me the thing is midfield this, engine this is a game when we need to have ballers on the pitch people yeah. who can handle the ball and do something with it and and that's okay. why i would like to see two number eights with uh, mason mount and um and bruno and uh, we have May menu in the number six and i think he will do a good job it's time it's time, like Bruce, Bruce Buffett was saying, I think so, because the midfield has been lacking energy. Casemiro, legs are gone. It is so sad to see this quality player, like Cristiano Ronaldo, the mentality is there, but the body is not responding. Mm. Cannot be passion merchants there. So, yeah, I would put uh, Mason Mount to the left, if you don't mind. I don't mind. You don't mind. No. And Bruno. 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 We don't talk about Bruno. No, no, no. Yes. And it picks itself with Hoyland on top. Yep. Hey. Ras Matas. Ras, Ras, Ras Matas. Ras. No. Oh, no, 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 Belfast Bebe on, on top. Bebe. I can read some comments while you put up the, the, the team. Uh, I see here Bacon Botty comes in and he say Mason Mount. Mm, bacon. Yeah. yeah. We need a little bit of a mountain Jew there. I think, I think he will still go with Garnacho to the left. Garnacho deserves to play on the left. Garna. He will play. He will play. And you think that... Anthony then. Yeah, Anthony will, will come in and play. Anthony had a great game against uh, yeah, who was it? Brighton? No, uh, Brentford. 
All right. Team writes, VR room, any objections, let us know. You want to override it, let us know. But this is currently me and Jarvis put this uh, lineup up. Andre Onan and goal. Aaron Van Bissaka is left back. Harry Maguire, Willie Kwambala, the man of the match from last game against Liverpool. Diego Dalo. And in the midfield, me and Jarvis has agreed on Mason Mount, Mountain Jew, Kobe Maynard to play as the number six with Bruno Fernandes because we need energy and um, power. Mm. Um, playing to the left, Ganacho picks himself. He's been immense. Rasmus Hoyland needs to find his scoring boots. We need to feed Rasmus Hoyland more balls in there. Otherwise, he's going to not score any. We need to sort of increase Rasmus Hoyland's goal tally and Anthony, which has been far, far more improved. Any objections, guys? What is VR Room saying? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Yeah, as, as I mentioned, Bacon Botti said the Mason Mount, uh, Yala Malmin uh, just comes up with a update on uh, the Leverkusen 2-0 two two against uh, West Whoa. Ham. Leverkusen. Uh, yeah, it's not, right. not going uh, great for the English teams uh, tonight. Not good, not good. We have live all the way from Germany reporting. Big up. Big Vietz, up, big up, good. guys. Good night. How are you doing? Yeah, Mark, what's your thoughts Mark. on Leverkusen now being up 2-0? Uh, it's not looking good for that fifth spot for Champions League this season. It's not looking not good. Look now. That's yeah, seriously well, I mean, affecting. Yeah, it's going to be bad because if they get knocked out, if Liverpool gets knocked out by German clubs, then their coefficient goes above ours. Whoa. So then that means that they, they rank higher. So we're in the third spot. That's going to be bad. But at the same time, it's good to see the Scousers lose. It's good to see, you know, it's, I, I would hope West Ham would have win. But, you know, I guess Bayern Leverkusen is not just having a Cinderella story. They're just, they're as good as they're taught it to be. Yeah, big up, Mark. Do you agree with this lineup, by the way, which we have selected? Or would you do something different? Can I see it for a second? Of course you can. <laughs> you oh. show me yours if I show you. I show you mine if you, I mean, I, you show me yours. <laughs> I probably would have the same exact lineup, be, I, exa except I would switch Anthony to the left and I would put Ganacho on the right because I think Ganacho has been better off the right. And, you know, off the left, Anthony, I think he played there in one game and it looked like it was a little bit easier for him to move about, to get himself about the field, get some passes in. But, you know, either way, in his last performances, he's been creating a lot for the striker. He's been trying to bring other players into the play in attack and you know it's just a matter of th time before he gets it right you know what i mean i feel like he's improved much since he came back from christmas so it's been good for the club and mason mount is good to start i feel like it's better option than mctominay he's came coming with some energy i mean he's just back from injury he hasn't really played a full 45 full 90 minutes yet but you know he could start for 45 minutes and he could probably come off if if need be if it's too you know, because I don't think they want to rush him back too soon. We've already had major problems with injuries in the squad. So, yeah, Macy Mount starting is not bad at all. I think that would be yeah. a good idea because he has that energy. 100%. Now you, we need to rev up uh, Mason Mount for the FA Cup and stuff like that, guys. Jarvis, do you agree with what Mar Mark is saying? They're like, you know, would you play Alejandro Ganacho to the right and Anthony to the, you know, to the uh, left? No. Or would you keep it the same? No, 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 no. Keep, keep it, keep it. Well, I like Ganacho on the right. I think he if if he's Hoyland more, but the Anthony, I don't see him as a as a left winger. I think he's more comfortable. He's at that stage now when he's finally starting to get things going on on the right side, and like changing him up, uh, it, it will it will not give him the confidence needed. Now we just gotta try and play him right side all the time until he thrives more. Because now we're starting to see a little bit more from uh, from Anthony. And, uh, and um, you know, keep it consistent. That's the thing. I think players need to gain confidence. So for me, play Anthony on the right. And uh, when it comes to Ganacho, we know he's uh, versatile. He can play as good on the right or the left. <clears throat> the Guys, only thing is, yeah. um, Bacon Butty comes in with a valid point. I'm going to address to you and to you. Ahmad, what's going on? Will he get some minutes? Does he deserve oh. a stop potentially? I think it would be, I mean, not, I mean, be not a start. I feel Anthony has given enough performances in the last two or three games to say that he deserves a start ahead of, of Ahmad. But whether Ahmad starts or Anthony starts, it's not a problem for me. I think he, he should get some minutes in the game. You know, I, I wondered where he was in the last game, to be honest. You know, I was hoping to see him take the pitch. 
you know so yeah definitely looking forward to him coming on maybe the 60th or the 70th minute yeah and getting 30 20 to 30 minutes of game time so he can yeah. do something and contribute this reminds me Jarvis you asked a question regarding how can can Ten Hag turn around can plays turn around yes we forgot about Ahmad you know there is fresh legs you know we talked yeah, about me, Mason Mount. Me, talk Ahmad about Ahmad. Just play, play to against uh, Bournemouth. Finish you the know, season. He doesn't play. I'm starting to doubt Ten Hag again because we need. He had a great game against Liverpool when he came in. He not only the goal. He played fantastic. He was composed. He's good on the ball. He knows how to dribble. He can hold up the ball. He, he did everything right. And his press play, you know, he's really good pressing the player and he won the ball a lot. Yeah, he's very good. So he's an intelligent player for me. I, I watch him play and I under, and I see, understand football. And that's a good thing. So for me, it's baffling to see Ten Hag not playing him. It's like he's almost punishing him, sitting him on the bench when they have had opportunities for uh, for Ama to play with injuries and bad Buddy. performances from Rashford, for example. And, and for me, he needs to play this game. You know, maybe not as a starter, but at least give him 30 minutes and 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 get him let him gain some gain some experience because you know oh. even though if we don't want to keep him we have the chance to sell him in the summer and we need to put him in the window so we can make some money on him we, ne we need to be smart jarvis this reminds me of something actually he gave ganache the same treatment if you remember he kept him hungry he didn't introduce him he, he sort of played him a little bit there and there and kept him on the sidelines prove it this is i think he's his time this is what he's doing to ahmad and yeah, I'm but have, you, yeah, but we have to give him five minutes, you know. We, yeah, you, yeah, we're not, sure. we're not making him hungry by keeping him on, on the bench for 90 minutes over and over again, especially after a performance like the Liverpool game. He proved against oh. against for Sunderland last season in the championship that he has the level and he has the, the ability to play game after game. He needs minutes. That's the thing. Yeah. Jarvis, my only thing, I, I just want I was just thinking about it. Like, you know, maybe if Mason Mount come, starts. And then maybe in the second half, Bruno drops into the eight and you bring Ahmad on in the 10 because I feel like his performance his performance greatly showed itself when he was playing in the central role to the end of the game. So I don't know, maybe that might be the solution, you know, to his getting minutes coming on like for Mason Mount, sharing minutes with Mason Mount for now until he could establish himself because I mean like, you know, maybe he, he, he comes in like for like half half a game for the rest mm. of the season he, or he, or like you know he starts for half a game Mason Mount comes on in the second half and they swap out because I feel like his better performance was in the mid was through the middle uh, yeah. but that's yeah. just what I was thinking just now yeah but the thing with Amon, you know he's, he's he's 20 years 21 years old he's not yeah, no, he's still young he's at the stage as at uh, his career that he needs to play he needs to play football and, yeah, and we true. know from the last season in Sunderland that he can play. And he can play but a look, lot of the games and still perform at a high level. So This reminds me of something Jarvis said and Mark, that like, you know, we still have a very good player in Ahmad. Like nobody talks, we, we talk about the academy players is coming up, but Ahmad as well. Like, you know, we want to see more about Ahmad, um, what he did the other, you know, when he played and scored the winning goal. So the future looks bright anyway. Um, <coughs> Roydon Frost comes out with a valid point. Guys, uh, we are wrapping up the show very soon. So get your questions in and we will finish up with Q&A questions. Are, as per usual, it's Jarvis Cocker's quarter style as well. Roydon Frost is say, here's an interesting stat. Only for two games this season did we, feel, did we feel, feel our, our best. Never. That's true. That yeah. is true. It wasn't two games we played our best 11 and then Leicher went off. Yeah, but what is our best 11? That's a really good question because I still feel like we haven't, we, we don't have our best 11 or either that or some of the players haven't yet made it to the first team in the starting lineup altogether. So I think it's it's fair to say that we haven't really seen our best 11, but for what it what it's worth, well, what we have in the starting lineup and the current seniors, we've probably seen the best combination of them maybe twice this season. Mm. Nobody really knows. I mean, if we had the best 11, if you refer to last season, it was Cassandra Martinez with Varan, Luke Shaw, Daloy, or Aaron Van Bissaka. Those two mm. were sort of... Then in the midfield, you have Casemiro, Bruno... 
Ericsson, right? But Ericsson's legs is gone. Casemiro legs is gone. Rashford is gone. Belfast baby hasn't really clicked for some reason. Belfast baby. Yeah. So, yeah. you know what? I don't know. I don't know. For me, but, for me, Mick, the best the best eleven is is the eleven players who is in form, performing, on merit, not the highest paid player or the biggest name or whatever Champions Leagues or Premier Leagues you have won in your career. It has nothing to do, to say. You have to start your best eleven players at the moment who's in form. And this is a lot of people are frustrated by Ten Hag selection sometimes when we see, for example, a player like Rashford is always starting ahead of. For example, younger younger um, talents like uh, Ahmad, uh, you know, I'm I'm all for giving a player a chance to to improve and and let him. Okay, you can have one bad game, two bad games, and 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 then try to to play yourself into form again. But you know, having thirty games, Rashford playing shite, that that hmm. that, that that's just so frustrating. And and this is. I think Ten Hag needs to address. But the thing is, we don't even know if it's Ten Hag's fault. Is it people from from uh, from the board, the structure of the club, pressing them to to play the star boy? No one knows. But we we, we read about yeah. it. Ten Hag said plans were made and and uh, deals were done before the season. That's why we lend out Donny because uh, there were, his place wasn't available for him to fight for. Yeah, speaking about Donny, um, hold that beer. And very interesting, you mentioned, Jarvis, about uh, Rashford, because tomorrow I'm working on a documentary that I'm going to release tomorrow just about Rashford, uh, the Belfast babe, you know, uh, diving deep into that. I'm going to release that tomorrow as well. But, guys, speaking about Donny van der Beek, we forgot we have Donny, and he's not really getting minutes at Eintracht Frankfurt at the moment. He hasn't played a, a game for about a month or so. That means that... He still will not be um, sold, I guess. He will come back in the preseason. Do you think poor Donny can have a revive his career next season? Or do you think it's gone? Yeah, Mark, you can have this. It's tough to talk about Donny right now. You know, like I thought he would have been doing a lot better. He plays for my buddy's <laughs> favorite team, Eintracht. So I, I, I'm part participating watching the games on a weekend with him to see if Donny plays. And he really hasn't played for the last three games. So it's been a tough one. You know, I can't really say. I, I What I would say is the first few games he did play, he was a bright spark in the team. But then he had a game where he it wasn't really going well for most of the team and he had a bad game as well. Since then, he hasn't really gotten any game time. That was like three weeks ago or four weeks mm. or a month ago, you know? So for me, it's a tough one. But I feel like Eintracht might enlist his services because I think the coach likes him from what my friend tells me. Like, you know, he's liked by the club. So maybe he might be moved on. Uh, it's kind of sad in a way because you know you wanted to see Donny succeed, and he came on last season. He had one, he had a good game, and then in the second game he came on again, and he got that that in that knee injury. It was really you know yeah. disheartening. It was like you know stressful for every, I guess most of the fans who wanted to see him come back and see what he really had to offer under a manager that knows him. So it's just one of those things. But before you go, Jarvis, let me just big up mm. Neil because I see he posted congrats to. Congratulations to Yerval Town. They got promoted tonight and his nep nephew plays on the team. So yeah. big up to you, Neil. Big yeah. up to your um, nephew as well. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, your listen, win. That's, listen, that's just, the National League uh, yeah. South, I believe. And, and they are on top 86 points, 42 games played. So fantastic. Uh, will they be back in the league system level four now, I believe? That's the next level. So pretty good. Yeah. Your win. Big up. All right. We, before we close the shop, guys, uh, we, we've spoken so much uh, about injuries. We have Phil Marsh, the um, ex-United ex players, speaking about injuries. You know, this is a serious knee injury that he suffered. Like So the comeback, you will probably never be the same, right, depending on what kind of injury. So there might be something playing in his mind, you know. Phil was talking about, you know, do you go in 100% or you go 50-50 into the tackles and stuff like that? You're a little bit worried. I hope for Donny's sake that he can turn it around because he hasn't been lucky, like, you know, uh, from, from a human perspective, right? Anyway, mm. 
And by the way, we have some laughing gas as well. <laughs> Liverpool full time nil three. Get in. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, oh, we're going to close. Scars the tears is going to be epic tonight. The, the meltdown is going to be real. Mm. Yep, guys, we're going to hear the score prediction from all of you. Get your score prediction in. This is the fun part. This is how we close the shop. Guys, in the VR room, I want to hear your score prediction. We got turned over at Old Trafford by Brentford, 0-3. What do you think will be the score prediction on Saturday at Vitality Stadium? I will go with Mark first. I think we're going to smash smash Bournemouth, to be fair. like you know, I know we haven't been in great form recently, but if you look at the last two games against Chelsea and against Liverpool, we've managed to score you know, three goals. You know, in the well, two goals in each average more about two goals in each game. You know, you know, it was one of those things for me where it was really unlucky with with the refereeing decisions on the penalties that were conceded because before we conceded those penalties, the the both both Liverpool and Chelsea had really no chance of coming back in the game when we took the lead. It you could see it from the the you know body language of their players. You know, they were just like, man, what do we do now? So although we drew against Liverpool, I felt like the team, they were fighting throughout the game. It was it was a tough one to say, you know, they didn't play well in the first half. But in the second half, from the moment Bruno scored, the team, like they switched on suddenly. And you were always thinking, you know, we could get another goal. We could get another goal. So for me, I feel like, yeah, we have a little bit of, you know, we dropped and we relaxed in the game against Bournemouth. You know, it wasn't a performance that we were expecting because, you know, before the game, we all predicted that we would smash Bournemouth in the first game, but it didn't happen. So I think, you know, we, we have some revenge in store for them. And, you know, the lads are creating chances. I think it's not going to be, well, when I say smash, I think we probably go, will win the game like maybe 3-1. I think they definitely might score a goal, but in the last couple of games for Bournemouth, they have not really been good at all. So it's one of those things where they're not really in form and okay. we should be the better team. Okay. So what do you say your final score prediction is then? 3-1? Three, 3-1. One? Three, one. All right. And who will score the goals for United then? I'm thinking Anthony's going to come in and have a good performance if he starts. And I'll back I'll back Rash, Rashford to score a goal if he does play. Rashford but is injured. He's injured. Yeah. he's injured, right? So then Garnacho. Ganacho and Hoyland will, you know, the the front three will score the goals tomorrow. I mean, on, and Harry yeah, Maguire tomorrow, on Saturday. <laughs> Harry Maguire, I think he'll have a really good performance. You know, like you know, one funny thing is, I'm one of the guys that wanted to sell Harry Maguire at the end of last season immediately. You know, and to be fair, he's been he's came in every game, he's got a chance, and he's been one of the most proactive okay. defenders that we have. It's just been shocking that. You know, he he turned it around with all basically all and everything against him. You know, we all thought the manager didn't want him. You know, the fans that wasn't really liking him at the moment. It was tough on him, and he, he sat down. He no. kept quiet. He worked on it, and he got himself in a situation where he could fight for a spot in the team. Thank you, Mark. How about you, Jarvis? Then um, you tread with cautious. It's going to be a basketball game, or it's going to be a pragmatic game where we parking the bus and hitting on the counter. How do you see it? Well, listen, you know, Bournemouth, they, they are really good. I, I, I respect them highly. I think it's, their manager is really good, Iraola. Um, it won't be a lot of chances. They will sit back with the mid-block, low-block. They will they will defend with their life. And when they have the, the chance, they will counter-attack with Sting. They have fast attackers, Tavernier, Solanke. They have full-backs who can run. They have good center backs and, and midfielders who work hard, so there won't be any space in the middle. I think it will be a tough game. Uh, I don't see a high-scoring game. Um, even though if we try to all out attack, they will just absorb it and, uh, and, and, and counter us. So for me, we have to, to be cautious. We have to be good in possession. We have to cherish possession. We, won't, we can't mm. give away the ball. Um, so it's up to Bruno now to show that he can play with the, with the smartness and finesse. Uh, then we might win the game 1-0, but this won't be a high-scoring game. So 
okay, I will, I will with my heart, I say 2 1 United. Uh, with my brain, I think it will be a 0 0 or a 2 2 draw, maybe. One. No, no, too many goals. No, I, no I don't draw. think it will be many goals. No, three, of course. Three I mean, goals max, but uh, 1 1. Okay, three goals max. I mean, if you look at their, their, their record, um, I mean, the home record is quite impeccable if you see how they've been scoring. And let me just pull that out. Where am I? I had it up somewhere. Um, listen, they played, uh, the form guide is away. They lost against Luton 1 2. They have registered three wins at home against Crystal Palace 1 0, Everton 2 1, and Luton was a 4 3 shoot as well. And then at home, they had a 2 2 draw against Sheffield United. These are a little bit of lesser teams, but I guess when United rocks up in, in town, it's always a cup final for them. So, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I want to go to the VR room to see first what they say before I give my verdict as well. Let me go and check what all you guys say. Rushmano believes it's going to be a, I would take a draw, but, you know, I have to win really. 3 2 United, what you're saying here. Rajat is saying 3 1 2. I mean, when you say 3-1 three, no, three, means to United or to Bournemouth? I guess you mean United because you're a United fan. 2-2, two, two, what you're saying is Craig Warby. Big up Craig Warby. And Nicholas is saying here, 3-0 uh, United. Revenge, Bacon Butty saying 4-1. No, you, oh, Neil Driscoll says 2-1. But who said 4-1? Uh, Bacon Butty said 4-1 here. Wow, it's time. It's time to get the shooting boots in. What else do we have here? Um... I don't know, man. Guys, Mental is saying he'll have what I'll have this week. He's going for a 3 1 United as well. Mm. And PJ, mm. I see PJ goes with a draw 2 2, which is a, um, I don't know. I'm leaning towards a draw. I don't want a draw. I don't think it's going to be a 3 1. Um, 2 1 United, I think it's going to be a 2 1. 2 1. I'm looking at the. Um, Nick, how, mm. how are we going to score against the low block? when there's no space in behind for us to run to, who will be the goal scorers and how will we create those goals? We need That's to have Ganache. We need to hold the width. We need to roll the ball. We cannot be, we need to have movement, right? Like if you saw yesterday, like, you know, how PSG and Barcelona played, we cannot be slow on the ball. The worrying sign that you have when you have Harry Maguire, like he's so slow on the back, right? Mm -hmm. We need to have movement. The midfield needs to be passing the ball around, need to hold on the ball spread out wide mason mount to provide a little bit of energy to do the pressing as well because he's really good at pressing you know what i mean but i think that goals will come from the width and to feed the ball into Rasmus hoyland 100 now we don't have rashford now we can start playing as a team but i think it's going to be a 2-1 or it might be a shootout like luton um 4-3 yeah i don't know man yeah, I don't think Bournemouth will open up. I think uh, Iraiola is extremely pragmatic. Yeah. Yeah. That's, the, that's the thing. So, and so, I for, think... me, so for me, the, the question is how are you going to score against the low block, mid block, sitting back, filling all gaps? There won't be any space. So we have to depend on, on our individual qualities on the ball. As you mentioned, Mick, we need to have we need to have tempo on the ball. We need to play from when we you, basically they will sit back in the block. We have to play around them. From one yeah. side to the other, without losing possession, without getting impatient, trying the hero ball, we have to just grind them down gradually. But grind we don't down, have yeah. the, the players; we don't have the mentality to do this, and this is my biggest problem. We have to we, rely on on an individual brilliant moment from May, Kobe Maynu, maybe Mason Mount, Bruno. Yeah, and no. That's the we thing. need to we need to nurture that ball more. We we we, just, we can't do the hot potato, hot potato like you know. Once yeah. you receive the ball in the mid midfield, slow down, hold it, look up, pass, pass around, like one, two, two, two touches, like create those triangles. <sighs> what will happen? Well, well, we will see on Saturday, guys. We see you on Saturday, 100%. We do the warm-up, potentially the watch-along with Papi and the post-match reaction show. So anyway, I want to just personally thank everyone that's tuned in. We have a lot of good questions coming here for D-Hub Sports. Um, 
D Hub Sports is saying 100% valid question, Jarvis. Should we just finish off with some, you know, positive VR room? Um, Jarvis, do you see any good comments? Mark, do you see any good comments that you want to bring to the stage before we close the shop? Yeah, the Hub Sports come in again and say, whatever happens, we must win. And I agree, it's a must win game. You know, we ha- if we are ever going to, to uh, build on this team, we have to beat a team like Bournemouth. They are below our level. So this is when United have to step up and show that we can we can beat the, the 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 lower team of the league, not only perform against Liverpool, basically. So so for us, it's it's there. It's a big test, and uh, and for me, it's a big test for Ten Hag because we can't go to our usual ultra direct, extreme transition, high tempo, chaos control thing. We need to to establish a a a, a possession based play and and try to keep the tempo up and beat beat a. a a, 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 and be the better team. Hmm. Okay. Good, good, good. Any more? <laughs> we are much not better. We, sorry, I was I got a vape here. I was coughing. <laughs> not used to it. Anyway, uh, if um, Rasmus scores early, I'll go for 3-1. Big up bomb. And anyway, I just want to close the shop and thank each and every one of you. The legend Rushmana, thank you for gifting oh, 10 sorry. memberships, 12, 41 likes. Get those likes up, please. 47. We have 47 now. We don't have to beg for the likes. If you're watching retrospective, you know what to do. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the like. It's free. It's free. And um, before we close the shop, just want to mention Rashmeno, legend, 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 gifting 10 memberships. Congratulations for everyone that received a membership as well. And Rashmeno also for gifting a 20 pounds super chat. And what else do we have to thank? Yeah, b- before we close shop, mental ball game comes in. Little funny comments. He said Jarvis <laughs> coming up with the logic again. Let the fans dream, man. Okay. Exactly, Sorry. Jarvis. Sorry. Exactly. Jarvis oh is God. coming in. We will you demolish know? them 4 0. Keep no, the no, 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 no. You, 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 you're you going know. a little bit too far, Jarvis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway. At the same time, we understand. And, 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 uh, and Thomas comes in with one last question. It's, it's a good question. And I will let Mick and Mark answer that before we close shop. Do you guys think we're ever going to play the United way again? Nope. I mean, what is the United way in terms of what are you talking about? Because I feel like the United way evolved, you know, like in the 90s when we had we had Dwight York and and Andy Cole up front. It was that two striker way. Then it changed from that to like a single striker after we moved on from him. Yeah, the four four two. These guys moved. You know, when we when we had a Van Nistelrooy, it even changed then. Then when we had Tevez and Ronaldo, we went to a front a front three. So the United way for me is more of a never say die attitude and a always, you know, the best to the, the first to the second balls, you know, very, very testy, a, a bunch that fights, you know, that has a, a strong mentality to win. That's for me is really the United way. So I think style of play is has been evolving even with Alex Ferguson. So I, I'm not I'm not really convinced, but I feel like maybe you were talking about the players or the or player esque. That reminds you of players from that re- that's that team, and it, it, we could say we have a a Garnacho who probably would give you some remnants of Ronaldo when he first came. You know, right? we have a, a Martinez that gives you a little bit of that as well. Yeah. So it's just yeah. that. How about you, Jarvis? Final words? Do you think about what Thomas saying? Yeah, United it's a good way. question, but I don't think we will play the United way again. It's just the way it is. Uh, but football has changed, and we have seen this the last uh, games in the couple of days. You know, the, the level in quality, seeing Manchester City, but Barcelona, Real Madrid, uh, PSG, you know, the, the level of the quality, the players, how they constantly run, how they solve all the puzzles, you know, the tactical things and, and the individual quality. So football has definitely changed from the United time 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago. So I don't know if you ever want to see the United way again. Now it's about high tempo, high transition. It's about yeah. individual quality. So it's 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 other it's another level. But oh, well, I, I, agree I certainly Mark. agree. I certainly agree with Mark and you. And uh, you know, football is involved. We used to play four four two. But I can reiterate what Stu Woolley was saying. He sees the evolution of going back to four four two, and that the two strikers is coming back into trend. 
right? Yeah. Because right yeah. now the new trend is pressing, the gig and press and stuff like that. But I believe that two strikers will come back sooner or later. But the United Way was like, what was that? Sir Alex Ferguson and, and Busby Babe. So we haven't played the United Way for 11 years. So mm. it's coming down to the new establishment when they come on board. And what will be their vision will be a new way, probably. Anyway, beautiful people, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we have something to celebrate that Liverpool <laughs> lost. <laughs> we can be happy about that one. Anyway. Guys, we see you tomorrow. It's Friday. Me and Mark is back in the studio with the manager's press conference. Do watch out also for the Be um, Belfast Baby video. It's coming out tomorrow and dropping it. Until then, what do we say on this channel? Peace, love, go bananas, do we? Huh? Jonathan Borg is also here saying. But no more chats. We got to close the shop because we got to go to sleep. We have families to feed and uh, kids to feed and sleep. Thank you for watching. Stay beautiful. See you to the next time. Glory, glory, Manchester United. Bye for now. Peace. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching MEFC Realist TV. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on the socials.